Hi, it's Tom here from Magic Woodworking. Today I'm going to look at power tools for beginners in woodworking. And trust me, expensive isn't always the way to go. Let's get into this. Now, for the beginner woodworker, the miter saw is one of the larger purchases and a major one of that. Now please bear in mind, it still needs to be able to cut at 90 degrees accurately um, or it's going to cause you a world of problems further down the road. Now you will use this machine day in, day out on your projects, so definitely worth getting one. Um, now you don't need to buy a high-end one like this Makita behind me. If you happen to have the funds, great, knock yourself out. But you could buy a cheaper one as long as it's accurate. Now, I say this, but even straight out of the box, chances are it won't be. Even this wasn't accurate straight out of the box. Read the manual, you undo a couple of screws generally, a few taps with your hand, with a set square, and you can set it up to 90 degrees within two or three minutes without too much fuss. So there you go, you know, a cheaper one is definitely a way to go. Or you could go down the name brands such as Makita, DeWalt, Hitachi, and many others. Um, but on the second hand market, now at the second hand market, you can literally pick these up at a fraction of the price with all the quality. And don't worry about it being worn out. These things generally will go on for many, many years. Um, so yeah, have a look on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Classifieds, or just yard sales, whatever. Wherever you can look around, you can get yourself a bargain and save yourself quite a bit of money. Now, with your battery power tools, such as your drills, your drivers, your jigsaws, your handheld circular saws, you do have a lot of choice here. Now, my advice to you is pick one brand and go with it. If you go with only one brand, all your batteries will be interchangeable. So, when you come to adding to your power tools, which you will over the years, you can buy bare units rather than the cased up ones with two extra batteries and an extra charger and it would be a third of the money. So if you're on a tight budget it's a good way to save money. Now another way of saving money, non-branded batteries. I've bought lots over the years and to be honest they're a quarter of the price, they give pretty much the same performance and they last for several years without any issues. So again, on a tight budget, it's another way of saving money. With performance, as you can probably tell, I'm a Makita man. I like the way it feels in the hand. I like the color of the tools. Just generally, I like Makita kit. It's not a flex, it's just what I like. But if your budget doesn't go to a Makita or a DeWalt, buy a Ryobi. The service it will give you will not be any difference. It feels pretty much the same in the hands. Performance is basically the same. And more importantly, it does the job. So if it does the job, you know, you're here to do woodwork. Be happy and go with it. Basically, it's just basically a preference thing. Now, if you'd like to support me and you like what you've seen in this video so far, please give me a like or even better yet, subscribe. Or leave me a comment, I will answer as many as I can. That's my plug for this video, let's get back to it. Next up is table saws. This particular one is a cabinet table saw. It is cast iron, it's reasonably heavy, it's reasonably expensive. If this is in your budget, great, they're a great piece of kit. But I'm guessing for a lot of you, it won't be. Don't sweat it. I would recommend a job site saw. Now, for the job site saw, I definitely wouldn't say buy a cheap one. Get a good name brand such as DeWalt, it will serve you great. And also, with a job site saw, when you've finished using it, you can fold it up and roll it out of the way, being portable, giving you more space to move. Because a lot of you guys will be working in your garage and you will have space at a premium. So, get yourself one of those, but when you get it out of the box, make sure to check that the fence is parallel to the blade. A lot of them won't be. So, once you've done a few test cuts and you're happy it's parallel, you'll be able to take care of all your woodworking needs, no issues. Now, when it comes to sanders, the make of the sander doesn't really matter, but a good quality sandpaper does. I would recommend you buying yourself an Orbit sander for your first sander, and if it's in the budget, about sander too. 
Why about sander, you ask? Bout sanders are great for rough sanding. And then when it comes to final finishing, the Orbit one is the boy. Now, should you buy wired or should you buy battered? You should buy wired. A wired Orbit sander will cost you approximately 50 pounds. A battery one will cost you approximately 100 pounds. That's bare with no battery. Also, it's twice the weight. It feels very cumbersome in the hand. So this is definitely the boy to buy. Next, should you buy a palm sander? No, you shouldn't, they're junk. And then finally, if it's in your budget and you've got a lot of board material to run, you could buy yourself a drum sander. Now only buy one of these if you have to do a lot of flat boards. They are very, very good at this, but not much else. They cost a lot of money. But if you have the work for it, it will serve you great. It will speed things up. It has a conveyor belt. It's much faster than just belt sanding. Um, but don't knock yourself out and then spend all the money on one of these if you've only got the odd job to do with it. Now, a planer or a jointer should be your last purchase because you can buy a lot of your timber pre-planed and ready to go off the shelf. But it's always better to finish your own timber. Now, I see a lot of woodworkers buying a jointer and a separate thicknesser. I'm not quite sure why. If you have the room, great, but most of you won't. So in that case, I would recommend a planer thicknesser such as this one. It's a lot better. It's a lot cheaper. It takes up less space. You can swap between planing and thicknessing literally in seconds. I will demonstrate. Put the guard down. Remove the fence. Undo your tables, lift your tables, and you are ready to thickness. It's as quick as that. So why would you buy a separate thicknesser when this does both jobs? Now with planers and planer thicknesses, size does matter. That's what she said. So buy small at this point and it won't be long before you'll need to upgrade it. So I would recommend buying one of these with a table length, that's both the tables combined, of 1500 millimeters or approximately five feet long. If you buy this, it will stand you the test of time. So that will about do it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.